Okay, August 1st, hard to believe. Welcome everybody. First meeting of the month. Beautiful Miami Township. Lovely evening, and so we're all inside. Nothing wrong with it. All meeting in order at 5 o'clock exactly. I have entertain a motion to adopt the minutes of July 18, 2022. I'll sure correct and calculate my motion. I so move. I thought you had something you wanted to change. You're not in discussion. Oh, wait, of course. Anything I second it? So, Mr. Allister moved, and we're waiting for a second. Second. We now have that second. Ms. Moyer. Any further discussion regarding the minutes? I have not. Did, did you change that? I did. So, the yeah, others, that's, that's not on your copy. Okay. Then I won't. I have no change. Okay. You have enough seats for a peanut gallery? Yeah. Okay. For peanuts. Uh, He's, there's no, yeah. Wrong He's discussed? Yeah. Okay. Marilyn, you have no? I have nothing to say about peanuts. They look good. I have a, a few things. <coughs> Uh, so the, uh, call to order adoption of TH minutes, so obviously that's uh, B minutes. Um, Wait, where are you? In, right in the front page. Yeah. Adoption of TH minutes. Oh, oh, the TH minutes, yeah. right. And then, did I miss something? Are we not doing in attendance records? Um, we used to. That is the public in attendance. Yeah, yeah, I'll fix that. Okay. Yeah. Um, public uh, comment on agenda item. See, uh, we're going over billion as the removal of section 18, but that's not the whole section. I mean, that's, there's a subsection which I don't have the chapter first. Oh, it's 1851 and 1852. Okay, there you go. Does that sound right? Sounds about right. Okay in the township code will be removed. There seems to be two. That's when the removal will be removed. Yeah, there is. Sorry, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Rough moment there. Oh, it's not going to be removed. It's going to be voted upon by the great town meeting. Okay. Yeah. Well, Truman has to start at the zoning commission for them to recommend removal. Right. And then so how about will be then discussed. Exactly. Anything but will be discussed instead of removed. Or done. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, might not. Might not. Okay, we'll discuss that. Next line is I I ask that the action be considered by the county prosecutor's office, then the RPCC executive committee. Now it gets a little bit complicated because after executive committee it will say it should say then to the full zoning commission, then... Wait, well, so then, not then back to the zoning commission, it has to be just back to the... It can be back to the full zoning commission. It could the be that, sure. The townships full, full or the zoning commission. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Then to the board of trustees if approved by the zoning commission. Then. So, uh, what about the public, there's no public hearing? Yeah, and would, board I, to the board of trustees. Oh, that's, yeah, I was just trying to, that's implicit in going to the, just trying to keep it a little simpler. Oh, okay.
she? She obtained them. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Okay, that's it? Well, I mean, that's it for that. Now. It was a rough meeting. At the bottom of that page, second, second page, YSDC. I wasn't there, so I'm a little, well, I mean, I was there, but I'm a little confused. It was reported that there was discussion on grant retention efforts. Is that correct? Uh, I do not know what that refers to. Mr. Hollister added that the corporation is wanting to hear from different sectors of the community on their visions of what they would like to see in the comprehensive economic development plan. This conversation would have prevented the frustration felt by the school board to be very touchy. Just rewrite it for me. All right. Um, we want to vote on these changes for the next meeting. Yeah, let's just, okay, we, let's just adopt them as, as amended or as presented. And we'll fix it. Hmm? And fix it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so there's a, we have a motion and a second uh, in front of discussion regarding the adoption of the minutes. Hearing none, may we vote, please? Mr. Hollister? Yes. Yes. Ms. Moyer. Yes. No, I'm just going to, I, yeah. I don't know how. We can adopt minutes and then amend them? Yeah, we're going to amend them, yeah. For sure. As, a, as we're adopting them as amended. Okay. As verbally amended. Yeah. Uh, okay. Normally presented. Normally we would be acknowledging public review. Well, let's just do that. Margaret, would you like to be the first member of the board to acknowledge your attendance? Here. Margaret Sullivan. I can take a minute. Fiscal officer. Dan Burke. Kelly Ann Tracy. Mark Are we all doing it? I'm sorry. Mark Shalb, Yellow Springs Nation. Wayne Craker. Representing. Oh, where is she at? Mike Nature. Woody Stroud in VRPC and Green County Transit Delegate. Scott Miller is in the Township. Brian Martin in VRPC. Director Martin, nice to see you. Yes, sir. I am first teacher of Miami Township, and this is Donald Hollister. So this is Don Hollister, Township Trustee, and Marilyn Ory, uh, Marilyn Ory, Township Trustee. So I'm curious why folks are here from NPRPC. Well, we're going to find out. <laughs> Pretty soon. As soon as, as soon as I get through this, we'll find out. Correspondence, 2021 Audit Water Risk Assessment Questions for the Audit Entrance Conference Invitation, which I filled out and submitted. Now that time, Strict Association, August Grassroots Clipping and Legislative Alert, letter from the Hawaii School Board uh, in response. And I did also send us a reply. Establishment of individual trustee email accounts. Answer to the questions provided by the National Council of Ben Huber. Trees on Jacoby Road causing power outages. We'll just talk about that in a uh, question regarding no truck signage. Request to attend the August 1 trustee meeting. We fulfilled that one. Fund status, revenue status, and appropriation status for 8122. Any further correspondence in or out? Were you the old? Was it enough for one trustee to respond to the audit assessment? I believe so. Just doing my position as chair. Margaret, did you approve my response? Yeah? Of course. <laughs> I can't take minutes. Okay. 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 Public comment on action items. Are there any members of the public here? Afternoon, we'd like to speak on any agenda items, uh, either new or ones they'd like to bring up. 
Yes, Executive Martin. Would you like for me to be here, sir? Or you can be anywhere you like, sir. All right, sir. It's great uh, to be a guest uh, here in Miami Township, uh, Greene County. Um, as Mr. Hollis here said, uh, why are these NPRPC people here? Well, it's our pleasure to be here this evening. Um, we have an announcement to make. We thought we would make it right here. Tonight we're here to honor and celebrate the long-serving and well-respected Miami Township trustee, Mr. Chris Meacher. <laughs> Mr. Meacher is a recipient for this year's Regional Steward Award. As you know, uh, Chris was our chairperson all through COVID. But to talk, talk a little bit about this, the award, it's named for our longest serving board member, Arthur D. Haddad, Regional Steward Award. The, the award recognizes someone with an innovative spirit to solving regional challenges, someone who builds broad support toward a shared regional vision, and someone who's a regional steward promoting economic, social, and environmental progress throughout the Miami Valley region. As a true believer in livable communities, Chris has been involved in numerous organizations that contribute to improving the quality of life in this, our community. He has demonstrated leadership and commitment in working together with the region's leaders and approaching the issues from regional perspectives. He exemplifies the highest standards of both dedicated elected official and community volunteer. Some examples, and you all know these, serving as township trustee since 1996, serving as the past president and secretary of the Greene County Township Association. I think that's why Mr. Miller is here, and we know him over the years as the township trustee current chair and 21-year member of the Greene County Regional Planning and Coordinating Commission. So, Township, County, Regional. He's held those seats and continues to do so for many years. Charter member of the Greene County Farmland Preservation Committee and the 21-year member and current president of the Greene County Health Department District Advisory Committee. Chris has served our MVRPC Board of Directors for 13 years. That's very rare. And he served the executive committee for eight years. He stepped in as interim chairperson after the sudden passing of MB MBRPC chairperson at the time, John Beals, in 2019, just ahead of the pandemic. So he got all the pandemic uh, and continued to provide great leadership during the transition. Chris continued his resilient leadership as he led our agency through the height of the pandemic in the face of unknown challenges during an unprecedented time. Under his leadership and support, MVRPC continued progress and, and, uh, with new programs and new members. If you think about the tornadoes, if you think about the Oregon District shooting, if you think about the KKK coming to our region on Port Huron Square, uh, you can think about the social uh, demonstrations that occurred in 2020, uh, you think about our NPRPC adopting a resolution in support of um, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. All of that happened uh, with Chris at the helm, and we thank you for that. We'd like to thank the Mutual family for sharing him with us, the Miami Township officials and members of our board for being here, uh, Mr. Stroud and Mr. Miller, thank you so much as we celebrate Chris's contributions to our awesome region, not only this township, but the county, the region, uh, and Ohio. It gives me great satisfaction to present this year's Arthur D. Haddad Regional Steward Award to Mr. Chris Meach.
Don't well, say I'm speechless. <laughs> yes, it's unusual. I'm sorry, but uh, I just feel very humbled and undeserving of an award. Who I know the predecessors, the predecessors in my position uh, have, have courageously accepted. Them. My um, next in line, uh, Trustee Marilyn Moyer, will be, uh, I believe, attending her first meeting on Thursday. Yes. Yes. Come on, man. And you're welcome to come. Uh, we're going to have breakfast at Riverscape. Sean has been working for the last three months preparing all this, cooking everything up for us. <laughs> <laughs> and you are welcome in the future family, trustees. You're certainly welcome to come. Uh, we will have some photos and tell everybody what we did, but we'd love to have you there as well. Thank you for the invitation. Appreciate it. And thank you for the uh, surprise visit. If <laughs> uh, you've got any more surprises for me. <laughs> Use what we can. You know, you can usually see us coming or hear us coming. So. Uh, Chris was an awesome chair. You know, when you were going through the, the minutes and the notes, it was very, you know, um, uh, and I remember that, you know, over two and a half years with Chris at the helm, we definitely had our share of typos and corrections and human text. So, uh, thank you for all you've done for service to the region and human stuff. Uh, we appreciate it. I couldn't thank you enough, Brian. Your mentorship, uh, across the board, you know, uh, you know, you know, mentorship across the board has meant more than I can And I don't mean just for me, I mean, I mean for every member of the organization that I've ever had. I've seen you uh, interact with it. It's just it's a, it's a joy to watch you work. And, uh, I hope you're there until your grave is done. That's the plan. <laughs> thank, thank you. We're a good team. Somebody on the ground to coordinate. <laughs> 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 See you Thursday. Thank you. Come on down Thursday. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sorry for you. Who's the son? Director Miller has asked me for just a quick comment. Uh, Miami Township hosted Virginia County uh, Township Association last month. And after the meeting was over, we had the opportunity to tour the building and the station. You have got one heck of a good facility here that was, I know there was a lot of time and effort put in by many people to get it to this point, but you have got a fantastic facility to be proud of. So, and we are. Thanks, Scott. We're coming from you, a, uh, uh, a lifetime of service basically in the, in the, in the fire service. Uh, it's, it's a very valuable comment. One, one notable thing that I saw, uh, the names on the bedrooms. Um, I'll let you, Chief, clue them in as to what it was. Okay. But that is a, putting a lot of respect for it belongs. Yeah. Yeah, we decided instead of, well, I shouldn't say we, Danny and I, the assistant chief and I decided instead of uh, numbering the bunk room doors or lettering them like other places would do, uh, we would name each bunk room after a famous fire chief from the fire service in general. So 
Uh, and then, to make it even worse for the guys, because most of them are so young they have no idea who these guys were, uh, we put an information sheet on each person in the room, and we've threatened them that there'll be a quiz. We haven't done it yet, but there's going to be a quiz eventually. Because uh, these are the guys who were the, you know, the heroes of myself and the system of power. And a lot of these guys don't know who they are, unfortunately. Though, so we thought that would be a little bit different and more, more fun to honor these guys and hopefully get some, uh, some training and learning out. No parts like this. <laughs> we'll see. Thanks, Scott. You're welcome. Congratulations, all of you. Thanks for coming, Woody. Thanks for coming, Cindy. Coming back. <laughs> Hear the roads before you're welcome to stay. <laughs> <laughs> right up. Um, we haven't done this, um, agreed to pay the bills, but well, let's do that. <laughs> I caught some. Good job. Good job. Uh, now I made a motion to approve payment of the bills the amount of $38,922.65. Broken down general fund, $2,898.50. Fire fund, $30,031.59. Cemetery fund nine hundred five dollars sixty six cents. EMS billing one thousand seven hundred eighty eight dollars twenty eight cents. Road bridge three thousand two hundred ninety eight dollars and seventy cents. Is there a motion? We have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. A motion is seconded for discussion regarding payment these accounts. Hearing none, we vote please. Uh, Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Usher? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Well, back to public comment on agenda items. Any other members of the public would like me to speak on the agenda items? Is this my turn? This is your turn, Don. So, I'm Lynn Kramer from the uh, Illustrators uh, Community Foundation. I'm uh, here to introduce you to uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives that the Community Foundation is undertaking. Uh, we initiated it originally uh, due to uh, all the national movements about racism uh, in the U.S. is culminated in the George Floyd uh, murder. Uh, but it was highlighted during the COVID pandemic when we discovered that we needed to be able to provide individual grants to people in the community. Uh, it turns out that, that there's a 2018 study by the Federal Reserve that 41% of Americans can't meet a $400 unexpected uh, bill. Uh, so uh, we, we had some generous donors who uh, were interested in funding a DEI initiative, and the Community Foundation has matched that from their own resources, and we're going to be able to provide thirty dollars to $40,000 a year uh, for uh, our DEI initiative. The initiative is divided into two parts. One is an emergency fund to provide uh, relief for people in those emergency situations. Um, and I'll go into a little bit of detail about that in a moment. And the other is a uh, uni uh, universal basic income demonstration project that we're going to begin in the village and country. Um, so back to the emergency fund. We met with uh, the existing seven or eight different emergency funds that exist in the village now, and the township, not just the village. Um, and we were looking for where can we help? Are there needs unmet? You know, what, what's, uh, I mean, besides more money, et cetera. And, and we discovered that the people that were not met by these current funds are basically the small but persistent homeless population in the village. Many of you have probably seen on the streets. Um, Florence Randolph is working actively with these people. And, um, we're going to help her in, in three, this year in three ways. Uh, one is to develop a Yellow Springs resource card mirrored, or, uh, mirrored uh, modeled after the Montgomery County street card that they've been using for years in Montgomery County to hand out to homeless people or other people that, that have a need to know what resources are available. 
or from near completion of being able to think that. Uh, another is to make sure we are connected to uh, the coalition, the Wheat County Housing Coalition, and the area continuum of care for uh, housing, uh, where there may be some resources that can help the village and township deal with this problem. Uh, and the last is to provide some lockers, lockers, to provide locker space for people who are homeless who go to the shelter in Xenia at night because they can only take in what they can carry and they have to bring it out the next day. And most of the people in the village who are unhoused uh, like the village and want to be here and so they come back every day. So uh, rather than have them uh, leave their tents that they would might be given uh, somewhere where they've been stolen and disappear, if they had a walk or a walk at him, uh, they would have those resources when they came back. So that's basically the three parts of our effort for this year. Uh, next year we'll see what comes up. Um, the universal basic income uh, demonstration is called YS Equity. Um, we're going to open it up for applications in um, September and October this year. Uh, we're going to provide $300 a month uh, for 12 months for people of low and moderate income. We're going to uh, use a weighted lottery to uh, select people to receive this. And the weighted lottery means that you'll appear more often in the lottery if you are, for instance, uh, a single parent um, or um, you a minority, uh, disabled. Those kinds of things will give you more points in the lottery so that we can focus it on, on people with the greatest need. But it will be open to everybody below those income levels who live in the village and the township. I think those are the only requirements. Live in the village and the township and uh, make people that certain. There are, uh, we expect results similar to a lot of other demonstration projects. The most famous is one in Stockton, California, um, that uh, saw a 50% decrease in income volatility compared to a control group, which one might expect. Uh, they saw a 100% increase in the ability to cover unexpected expenses uh, and a 20% increase in debt payments. Stockton's a pretty large city. Most of the UBI initiatives in the country are in big cities. I shouldn't say those. All but one are in big cities or statewide pro uh, programs. Uh, there is one small city in New York, Hudson, New York, which is about twice the size of the Yellow Springs. And they've been doing their uh, demonstration projects since 2020. And they've seen similar results increased financial stability, increased employment, <clears throat> increased physical and mental health, improved relationships, and increased personal agency, people feeling they're more in control of their life. Uh, our, we're planning for our endowment to uh, uh, cover the operational costs and payments to individuals. That uh, uh, will be to 10 to 30 people a year, depending upon how we uh, raise money. You know, we have to start. We, can raise money. Uh, we have applied to the county under their ARP Act uh, grants for nonprofits for help with the startup costs. Now, we can do the continuing costs, but the startup costs add something in the first year. That's basically for uh, initial advertising and paying for evaluation so that we have a professional evaluation of the program as we go on. And all I ask, if anything, is if you would provide a letter of support to the county commissioners in uh, support of our proposal. And I uh, do have a summary that I can send to the three of you so you have that information that gives you a lot of detail over to it for that uh, letter if you choose to do it. Great. If, if you would, that would be that would be one that we have to do. Um, for for my purpose, I'd be 
happy to either send a letter or as chairman of the, of the board or, or work with other members to put one together if, if you so desire. I support the program, so I support it. I don't, I don't need to approve the wording. All right, so we'll take care of that. Okay. I do have a question. Send it to us. Sure. Do you have a, a notion of uh, what income range are you, what are your sort of plateaus? And, um, it's uh, up to, uh, I believe, up to area median income. So well, the area median is 40, 50 thousand. For a family of uh, three or four. And for a single person? It's about 30 thousand. So, what the boundaries of this would be the township or the larger than that? Township and the village. Township and the village. This is the Yellow Springs Community Foundation. When would you like to receive the letter? Uh, pretty soon, they're going to be making their evaluations of the proposal, of the, our proposals in uh, the next uh, 30 days, I guess. So, I'll, I'll get you that stuff. Should we send it to you or directly to the commissioners? Directly to commissioners is fine. Uh -huh. okay. Any other questions? Do you guys have a dollar figure that you hope to raise for the indemnity? Well, we hope to get to a $3 million amount. That will take several years to get there. So we'll build the program as we go. But we do have it up to start the first year. So we'll do that. We do have enough to start the first year. Oh, yeah. Any questions for Mr. Kramer on the, on the floor? I might add, we'll be the first small village to do anything like this. Um, like I said, the next smallest is Hudson. And they're about twice as big as we are. So it's really, uh, in, in the people we're dealing with uh, that we talk to, professionals, board members, they're kind of excited to have such a small, um, what community get behind something like this. And, and why is that? I mean, why is the magnitude and size? In it's just that you can see results in a small community a lot sooner yeah. than you can see in a larger uh, community results, not the individual results, but the actual impact on the community will probably show up faster here mm -hmm. than it would in a city like Chicago where they have maybe a small uh, a portion of the people that we participate. And you expect the big cities to have to solve a homeless problem, but you don't necessarily expect a, a small village to, to have to address it. Yeah, not the same. How will you advertise this? In other words, how will the people that might want to take advantage of the program a, find out about it? We're going to do a, a media blitz and go uh, to churches in town. Uh, we're hoping to have a, a debate to introduce it to the public with a panel discussion. So that's the plan, and that will be coming up over the next 60, 45 days. Uh, my experience is that the people living outside of Yellow Springs in the township don't tend to pick up on what's going on in Yellow, in Yellow Springs anywhere near as, as universally as the people in Yellow Springs. Or have to work on that. Yeah. Any other questions? Well, thanks for coming, Landmark. Thank you. I don't want to hear the words for you. Congratulations on all, on all your work. You could give your family the road report when you get home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they get it later. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I get it. Let me see. I think we're probably done with public comment on agenda items. Are we? Are we? I'm losing public quickly. <laughs> now about a fire department report. All right. Uh, since the last meeting of the board, we have had 40 EMS incidents for the bath. 
And then 13 fire incidents, there you go, it's coming back down there. They include, yeah, oh, yeah, guys have been running their butts off. Uh, they've actually had four calls so far today, so we can see when else the ship goes for them. Um, those incidents include two rescues from uh, State Park property, one in the, in John Bryan and one in the Clifford. The Andrew Pikes. Tomorrow night we'll be doing our first swearing in ceremony in almost three years because of that pesky pandemic, so it's kind of a catch up ceremony. Uh, so there's a lot of people, you guys got your invites. Uh, it's going to be cake. Cake will be served. The classic NTFR Kroger sheet cake. Mm -hmm. Is it public or just the Oh, it can be anyway. I mean, we didn't do a big, like, yeah. glitch just because yeah. COVID numbers are up. Yeah. Speaking of which, we had two guys out last week with COVID. COVID the return. <laughs> the mask back on. Um, who, uh, but they both recovered. Thank goodness. So. Yeah. Never a dull moment. Um, they were vaccinated and they did well? I just yeah, both are vaccinated and boosted times one. So it's out there, people. Watch out. Um, <laughs> in case you didn't pay attention. Yeah. In fact, uh, you may have noticed that the air conditioning is still not working. You know how quickly parts in last week. So we are awaiting their return tomorrow between 8 and 9 a.m. Let's see what happens. Do they know what the door is? They do now. I made it pretty clear that the door that says public entrance this way is, in fact, the public entrance. <laughs> as shocking as it may be. They came, but they couldn't find a door. I have told the staff for tomorrow who's working, if they see a house truck pull and just chase it. Yeah. Like an ice cream truck. Right? <laughs> chase that stuff down. Um, in a shocking moment uh, the other day for one of our rescues, uh, we discovered the rescue truck was not working. Uh, had no power steering or brakes, which oh was <laughs> fun to pull it out and realize that I was going to roll into the tension ditch back, but luckily stopped with enough Fred Flintstone action that it finally, uh, <laughs> between Denny and I, we put our feet on the camera stop. A little terrifying. Uh, so Dan was able to help us today um, get it to Village Automotive, where even as we speak, uh, yeah, even as we speak, until so Sunday. So, um, and then last one, well, no, actually not last one, at least. Um, during the Ohio Fire Chiefs Conference two weeks ago, I had an opportunity to meet with, um, I can't remember the other company, but the guy we want to hire to write us, uh, write our assistance to firefighters federal grant mm -hmm. to get us money. Mm -hmm. Or we were hoping would be a fire. Mm -hmm. Then when I described to him uh, our fire situation, he said, yep, nope, next. Okay, okay. Uh, because our other fire truck is not only the 2010, so FEMA will not. Um, granted, they've tightened up the apparatus. There was a big kerfuffle a few years ago, and I think justifiably so. When Centerville slash Washington Township received FEMA fund tax, uh, firefighter grant tax money to buy two new fire trucks, Centerville, uh, for a grant program that's designed to help underfund with underserved firefighters. So uh, they've tightened up those, uh, those requirements, apparently to our detriment. However, um, I mentioned our turnout here, and we said, nope, next. Uh, then we got the SCBA, and that's a winner. So that's our, the air packs that the guys with. Um, they are old enough that uh, well, Chris, Chris signed the check, I think, to buy him when he got these. So uh, uh, he's pretty confident he can get those in place for us, which would be very nice because of $7,300 a pop. Uncle Sam can buy them for us. Yeah, so, so. Uh, that grant period probably will not open until early next year. Um, and part of it is the I think we pay him a flat fee and they get a small percentage which is built into the grant. So they get that percentage. But he has a 78% success rate in the final event. So that's uh, better than us trying to write it ourselves. Uh, in other federal news are I think it's six percent. He, we pay him like $1,100 for contract, and then he gets 6%. He's on the lower end of some of these grant um, Our um, the bane of my existence, that stupid federal number, uh, whatever, you know, the one that we have to renew every year. Sam. Sam. The SAM number. The SAM.gov number uh, is up 
expires at, at the end of August, I have begun uh, the work needed. But of course, because the federal government makes everything easier everywhere, this year you have to verify that even though you have a password and a two-step authentication, it's actually you doing it. Uh, I'm having a small problem getting it to realize that Miami Township and Miami Township trustees are the same entity. We'll continue working on that, but if you find what's left of my hair on the floor, <laughs> it's because I pulled it up. I thought you were doing it by finger sticks. Uh, now I know why they talk to higher companies for you to the pop to do it. That's <laughs> what I get for last year being like, oh, he's a kid. I don't know why we'd hire someone. <laughs> I assume this is not one of the 300 unsolicited solicitations for. No, this one's the actual. The Sam number. Yeah, this is actually from the real Sam.gov. This time it's real. It's from the Sam.gov. Uh, okay. Whose email said, four easy steps, you can get a renew. So you have to re verify who you are. Anyway, so I will get that. Somehow I will get that done by August 23rd. Just remember, uh, you're the one who never wants to retire. <laughs> Add that off to someone. Order. I think you should do that. Um, then last but not least, uh, under all health chief, uh, during the recent fire chiefs conference, I was sworn in as the capo de tutti capi of the Ohio Fire Chiefs Association. Which if you're not from New Jersey, is the chief of all chiefs, um, uh, which is actually the president of the Ohio Fire Chiefs Association. So I'll serve a two-year term. Still do the job as a retired chief. We've had several retired chiefs. Uh, but I'm the first two year president to change the Constitution. Because the other presidents all felt that once they were hitting their stride, their term was over. So I'm the first president. I've got a great team working with me, and we've got a really good agenda of things to get to. Hopefully. We'll see. I'm sure we will. People seem to applaud when I told them what the agenda was, so there was that. So it's a good thing. At least the 150 people in the room thought that was a good idea. We'll see what the other 1,800 members think. Anyway. I just want to tell you how cool it was. I, I hike in John Ryan Park all the time. Mm -hmm. And I just recently saw a sign that said, Help us find the people. Yeah, it's been five years. I'm sure you're at the same time. And I just noticed that if you scan a code, what? and then at the phone, they give you a phone with you, and then you can be found right. anywhere. Else. Yeah, there's a, an app that we're using that's called What Three Words. Yeah. It's a British yeah. company. Um, and it takes a global grid map, whatever the that is, well, it's a global grid map, but, um, and for every, it's like a three meter square area, assigns three different words to it. Um, so if you're hiking and you're lost or you're injured and you pull up the app and it's, it locates you and it says like, dog flying umbrella, and you tell the dispatcher, dog flying umbrella, we put it into our thing and we can come right to you. Um, you wouldn't think that in a 2,000 acre wilderness area, it's that hard to find people. <laughs> but the vast majority of people that we pull out of there have never been there before and are not prepared for the moderate level of, um, of outdoorsy. <laughs> uh, so it, it'll take us, I mean, people will tell our dispatchers legitimately, you know, what are you near? A tree. <laughs> okay, anything else? I see a rock. Okay, well, that narrowed it down. Um, so this will really help us. So uh, guys on B-Shift put together a flyer and put it in all the entrance to the trails. Um, and John Bryan, we're going to do the same thing in Glen Helen. Because Glen Helen's even worse. But because they're getting better because they're putting in num uh, signs. But um, the state park made a big investment in signs last year, two years ago, which were well, well needed. So that's helped. But now Glen Helen, too. We're by the beavers. Oh, okay, well, you know. Where are they currently? Um, so we'll be putting that on social media as well to get that out there. But actually, I'm on a task force. I'm not sure how it's going, but uh, an ODNR task force for trail and boating safety. Mm -hmm. And the other day, actually, one of the ODNR guys said, oh, it's just out John Bryan. And I saw these signs that the local fire department put up. Said, That's us. Ha ha. So um, people are noticing, which is good. What's the name of the app? What three words? 
And uh, that's 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 so rich. But do these not work? Do these not work on the phone? You don't have reception. Right. Depends on your service. Okay. Um, so you do have to have reception. It says it works offline yeah, it that. Um, on their website. I haven't tested that out because I have reception right? So, right. Um, okay. But I know that like AT&T, if, you if you're an AT&T customer and a T-Mobile customer, it's got pretty good coverage within the, the park and the land. I don't know about Verizon, uh, but I would assume they do as well, especially since they have a tower right there at the mining center. But, but it, uh, it's, it's a really neat app. Um, I have no idea about it, but uh, Assistant Chief Powell and Lieutenant Klein both have discovered it somehow and were telling me about it. We tried it out and it actually worked, took us to right where our patient was. So um, you just scan either Apple or Google Play, it will take you to the app store, you download the free app, install it, and uh, voila, who funds it? I honestly don't know who funds it. Uh, who funds it? Uh, there's probably ads. I would assume you open the app. I would assume so. But it's pretty impressive. So, I have a question. Uh, two meetings. Three meetings ago, you weren't here. And I'd like to get the, the numbers for EMS incidents and fire incidents in that, in that section. Three. Ago. Whenever it was that you didn't, that was last you didn't have a report. Oh, last meeting. No, you didn't, didn't have a report. Didn't report. report. Okay. But before that, there was. You had to go right right to the end of the meeting because there was you were getting bombarded. Oh, right. Okay. I'll, I will find that out and get that to you. Anything else, for Chief? Mm -hmm. we'll move to the uh, Cemetery Road report. The, since the last meeting, we've got Gordon Mario, the wind point, the wind area, and the last Saturday. As you know, we had road work done in six years, and we were finished today. We were going out. There's some dirt work that we got done. We got done to the last job. We checked it, okay? And I'm glad there was the opportunity to have that corner register, too, also. Yeah, well, we had some to get rid of the door access. Yeah, place to scrap the building for a little bit. It would help how they can stay. Now they would help. I look over here. Yeah. Um, well, the great rumors I had fallen to, I think today was going to be the way. Today was, yeah. Well, that was the last I talked to them. Mm -hmm. Then we got back to the room. But they're filming. I like the, the map of it. It's a little bit of a little more information. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, in a continuation from the kind of last meeting, I think we would like to have a brief conversation, and certainly from your perspective, on the necessity for water service in the uh, eastern portion of the cemeteries. Why do water or do you water? Well, you mean the new section? Well, east side of the yeah, 68 everything east of site 68 because you have a water line that goes up to the front of that. It's already going your way down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't understand why the water, but the new water is more of a water plant.
last week when I brought it up, I, I, I started off by saying I love that there's going to be love out there. And that the, the, the prairie people need it too. Mm -hmm. uh, your, your own orchards hauls in water to, to, to water the water. Oh, sure. So, there's um, a lot of people that so, things. Um, I have no doubt of how nice it will be to have a lot. It was, it was just a process. It wasn't, it wasn't the necessity. Well, let's, let's continue the process. I spoke to the well people. They should be there within two weeks, and so we're making progress. But I want to officially ask for a motion to put a well in. I move that we put a well in, serving the cemeteries east of 68. Have a motion and a second to the further discussion regarding that motion. Hearing none, may we vote please? Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Major? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Uh, continuing. Don, did you have a chance to visit the data? Uh, Apparently, I wasn't clear about the website, about the, uh, the casket transportation device. I did not do any more. Well, I, mean, I, I tried, I did a quick scan, and I didn't see the product. Okay. Did, you, did you realize it was a cart that he was that he was Yes. Oh, that, see, I missed that. That was my, well, that was my I realized that from a subsequent email okay. or text or something. Okay. I got lost in um, Fascinating shroud land. They got <laughs> this green burial service. If you've not thought about how you're being buried, I know it's a favorite of yours. They got these shrouds that are just gorgeous. Alternative to caskets. And um, they're just beautiful. And they have these like sewn-in loops where you can carry the person. And they're expensive. And they're expensive, but so is past things. Right? I'm sorry, Laura, you can't yeah. sell you. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'll look on eBay or something. Walmart. 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 Or Amazon. Did you ask it for everything? Oh, Walmart. Oh, yeah. Well, I've been to two of the three burials. Two of them, I remember, they simply used a white sheet. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, you remember anybody using the commercial shrouds? Dolphin. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, one of those, what I remember, is white sheet. There was a shroud. Oh, uh, it was there, I didn't see it. Well, there's no white, there's no shroud. Oh, okay. Stay corrected. Two, I believe, you use a hand in hand. You need to use a a funeral home is necessary for an actual burial? Nope. But then you got to have somebody who's willing to. And there is no prep for a natural burial in there, right? Sure. Oh. Okay. I'm going over my head. Backboard, uh, we've been using a backboard on it, uh, which 
comes out of an ambulance does not seem quite as dignified as. I don't do that at all. No. no just we just need the board always the bars down. Yeah. Well, that's we did. That's good. We did. Yeah. Um, we are now in a position, and again, do you recall that we did find a company that will build a kind of an old-fashioned cart? And big wheels. Big wheels. And then two, you know, something that sits on it. Mm -hmm. yeah, kind of hand, right. hand drawn. Hand drawn in the front and, and the back and, and the sides on it. Um, and at the time, we didn't, we didn't have the money in our coffers really to justify buying We would have had to purchase the general fund money was enough to set the accounts, et cetera, et cetera. And the point is we are moving along. I, I see us moving along uh, to bigger and better natural burial options for the public, but it also is going to require further distance to go from the, from the front. Now, potentially, and I don't know if you've ever had that conversation with uh, with um, Hensley's about doing a, a, a grind and a chip seal to the back of the back, you know, which would allow us to potentially bring a, a transportation vehicle, you know, closer. But um, but I would like to suggest, and we, apparently now we need a little bit more time to explore. Maryland's going to a cemetery uh, in the very near future, who's using one of these devices exact same one um, and I've got a list of other ones that are using it and I've, I've actually seen it I haven't seen it in use but I've physically seen it and it, it, it is quite impressive I think just the way that it's made it's all handmade and it's all wood and wrought iron and you know, it's not, how much does it cost there four thousand thirty nine ninety nine um, again beginning of this process we really afford it the ones we have was about twelve hundred dollars, I believe, and then we got the backboard off the of the little ambulance. So, I'd like us to consider, you know, when we get to the point where we start the really Oak Road, it takes them a couple months to, to build one, anyway. Um, but um, to consider purchasing one of those, uh, I believe it would store in the shed. No real problem. We probably have to remove the care that we're using now, of course, but I we will go in there no problem. It's not that um, So let's put that on the for future consideration. Which I'm good at me. Okay. Which you perhaps get a chance to look at a little bit more. So you can do that yet. Um, last thing on Oh, who's on contact if you want a natural area? You decide I want to. Cemetery Sexton, Okinawa. Okay. Uh, his name is plastered all over our uh, our township website, okay. uh, and it's the Sexton um, that leads us into very wonderful area. I've been paying a call for this, but our new Glenforest.com, GlenforestCemetery.com website is progressing uh, right along. I would expect in the next month or so it will be in the in the development stage where we'll have an opportunity to see it and, and um, you know, we can't make any changes. It will not be public at that point, but it will be a finished, soon a, a draft finished product, product uh, that we can look at. And uh, it's, it's going along well. Um, just finished mixing drone footage that we had done uh, from one of our members, Collins, uh, here, but he gave me the, uh, the name of one of his members who does drone and love work. And uh, he came out one Saturday and he did a lot of droning around the cemetery. And then uh, this past weekend, I cut a lot of that down and have a uh, uh, 40 second uh, clip which will loop through on the, the, the beginning page, the, the main page, the home page on the cemetery website of, of the ground flying through all the different parts of uh, the cemetery. Nice. So that's something else to look for. Uh, any questions on any of that?
goes. So that goes to be at $86,000 in the cemetery fund. Is that right? Yep. Right. And we took it over in 2013, and we were getting that, given a hundred thousand dollar check. So where was the point at which we didn't have the money for it? After we spent 100 plus percentage of the 100 plus thousand that we got, oh. we spent it all on that sum. To, to, to set up the new natural burial centers? Well, to set up, you know, keep in mind, remember the Glen Forest East, the traditional cemetery that's there now, was not being used. It was just kind of a field that had been kind of laid out in some roads, but they were just helping the grass. All the, all the survey markers were buried four inches underneath. We had no idea where anything was. Yeah. There was none of the fencing, the metal fencing along the front, there was none of the stone pillars. Right. Obviously, the, the, the entrance way was not there. Um, so so lots of things that chewed up money. Yeah. So our funds are back up just from? Correct, from sales. From sales. Mm -hmm. And so you, you often, refer to that as an endowment that came with our, which we didn't used to be in charge of this until 2015. Mm -hmm. um, it, right, it was an endowment. endowment. Yes. But and we didn't keep this. Well, because, well, one, it was a private organization, it was yeah. a Glen Forest Association, and they had no capital reserves of their own other than what they got from selling, quote, endowments with the, with the graves. They, they'd sell a grave for $200 and they'd sell a lifetime endowment with the grave for $100 and put that money in the endowment fund. Which generated those groups of money. Yeah. 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 And, and for yeah. perpetual care. Yeah. Okay. Just practically yeah. speaking, it sounds like it was treated as a reserve fund. It was, it was really, it was an endowment fund because they could not use it for anything else. But then when it was transferred to us, I mean, I'm not saying it was misspent. Mm -hmm. Usually an endowment all you spend is the interest. Right, but at the time, it was once it once it transferred over, it was no longer an endowment; it was an asset. Yeah, was, yeah. And and we used it as such as an asset. I think it would be easier if we just wouldn't use it for endowment. Well, we won't use it anymore in terms of land force. You know, and this is just how it came across to us. Um, so, so the eighty-six thousand. Accumulated over since 2013. <laughs> Again, yeah. primarily. And now we have a lifetime of <laughs> grapes. And mm -hmm. and certainly do. Yeah. Well, we're, we're about to spend 40 some thousand on the blacktop for um, the old center. It's been done. Uh, so that, that okay. 80 is going down. Okay. Uh, but, you know. You got to spend it, and this is the time of year when yeah. you know you do the work. Um, yeah. Cool. Okay. I don't want to talk forever about cemeteries, but do we get data on the use of? Uh, it's not ancestry.com. Well, people come to our website and look up a name or, uh, and they want they, they add information that gets added. We get it notified when someone wants to add. We do get notified when somebody just looks at it. That goes directly to the software people. Just so we don't know how many hits we get a month. No. We could probably find out but six long months I doubt it's any more than Anyway, it follows. Good to mention that one of the resources is you can look up graves. Well, and we run an ad periodically, I think every two weeks, in the local Springs Moon for the National Burial, or for the Burial Service. Burial search service. And you could, like I saw somebody in there who's funeralized at, back in 96 or something. And the, the, the date of birth was estimated, and the, the burial date was estimated, and 
I could fill out some form, well, call their family and ask if I could fill in that information. So we have a process for filling that database. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's all scribed on the website. Yep, or you could just do it yourself. Or it says you know how to do it now. Yeah. Yeah, I found a couple of errors I was going to change in there. All right, I know for cemeteries, how about roads? Okay. We had to go by roads to the road I don't know how they get down from either. Mm -hmm. well, just the up and down and round and round. Good job, but there's no nice job there. Yeah. But you got it here. But, uh, yeah. Okay, so it went over the road. It went over the road. It went over on the road. But part of that is the formula you used by the camera. Yeah. Because I had the parking lot figured in just in case down by the middle. Mm -hmm. We dropped it. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty good for the whole study. But it's really hard. I had it for a good day. But I figured it. Yeah. Just in case. But I was out there. Mm -hmm. And I had it in the corner. So I had it in the middle. And I had it in the corner. And I had it in the middle. 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 So you could level it out, right? Or get the right. Right. It was. It was. It was. It was. It was. It was. So we will have to do some more over here. Yeah. So I thought it was pretty much. I agree. So we should have to play well over here. Yeah. Uh, I imagine we don't get the motorcycle going up there. And sure. It's a great car. It's a great car. I was going to say something like that. <laughs> uh, we're going to do some legends at this point. We're going to do some areas. We're going to do some legends. Yeah. 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 Standard going down towards from the church you know, past mm -hmm. the, the, the mm -hmm. that past the that small section mm -hmm. of the clear that back in and put the small part of the house and then the other area. The real new way that's the same. But they know what it is. We are back down to the town facility. Yeah. Table is through the end. Yeah. That'll be one, it's probably one that's part of the two days. Yeah. Now, what are we going to charge them for that? We're going to take the material and labor. Well, our contract's been $50 an hour. Yeah. We'll take our labor charges. Per person. Just going down what I saw the other day, Snip Road could use some plowing and trimming. It used to look nice, Golden Will looks nice, Brandon looks nice. East, not east, but east, not east, east, but east by these low in sections. I don't know why there's just a couple of places where it's five feet tall and Well, by the width I've already known, I think you know, it's pretty I can't get all that to reach from the Yeah, but they have that way more. Easy, 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 easy. 
mode and trim, which we always done, even though the way that I start. Uh, you know, circle needs a little bit of turn back. Carbson could use a little mowing eventually. No. Um, Arkans could use a little mowing here and there. South River looks fine. Kyle. Uh, Kyle needs some mowing and trimming. North River looks okay. Things looks okay. I didn't go to swimming pool, but I guess it's okay. Uh, you go down to buy and you kind of look okay. So, yes, no? Do you agree with that? Jacoby wrote, did you? You probably didn't see. There's a, a correspondence that we received last week uh, from a resident on Jacoby Road. You're familiar, you've been there. Uh, they're concerned that the trees in the right of way uh, may potentially fall on some power lines. And they would like to have us remove those. I don't know if you actually in the right of way. Well, that seems to be a job that needs to be looked at. And DPNL used to do that. Huh? DPNL used to clear. Yeah, just, just so we're kind of clear. Clearing trees for power lines is, is not a township responsibility. Uh, she's gotten some bad information from another resident out there, but that's, uh, that's a job for the utility company. In addition, uh, there may be some confusion as to whether a tree looks like sometime in the future it may drop a branch, but if there's not a big old dead branch sitting there, well, so do that on those things. work. Yeah, the potential possibly could take out the road. They came out to but we can't go there and just take down the road to that. I don't know if they're actually in the right of way. Yeah. And the word is that Xenia Township is trying to find a bucket truck so they can come and take down problems. We'll kind of work together on that stretch here. Get a call and get a tree down, power down, and then get the power comes down there, and then we do the water. I think we're going to want power. But yeah, I can help with people here. Mm -hmm. Further comments or clarity or questions about who's responsible for what? How can we treat them? Good. Oh. I mean, I, I made the comment earlier that I drove out there on Jacoby Road and didn't see it. Um, just a thought. We're going to go back to cemetery for a second. I'm going to read my mind here. But as we all know, we have the Natural Burial Cemetery. We have a moral scattering garden on one side, the monument. We have a open area that, that mimics the cemetery, the scattering garden on the other side of the, of the path. Uh, with no monument, and we don't scatter on yet. We have it. I thought we did. I mean, I have it. No, we, we, we don't. We have it. No. I'm glad we have it. I'm glad we have it because we, we don't. But we may think about it. I mean, the original idea was, in my mind, was we had a we had a monument. We put one monument in. We were putting names on that monument, going across the top and down the front. We had originally thought about doing the sides, but decided probably not the best idea because in the future, when we need additional space, we need to put an additional monument on one side of the other, and then next to that, and then next to that. And it probably would not be, uh, depending upon your spacing, is to, to have them close together and, and have names go down the sides. And it, yeah, it just didn't seem right. But now, I mean, we're starting to get that monument used. And when it comes out, should we think about putting a monument on the other side? I thought your original 
I kind of came up, and I, I hate to say I came up with the idea, but kind of came up with the idea of, of the trees for a couple of reasons. One is the experience that I've had over the years with Glen Forest East and the natural burial. For some reason, and I guess I can understand it, for some reason people want to be buried under a tree. Or they want to be buried in shape. Or they want their loved ones to be buried in shape. If we look at the natural burial and we look at Glen Forest East, we look at the sides of the cemeteries that have the line of trees that are delineating between properties, etc. That's where all the headstones are. They're all under the trees. Not all, but a good, good many of them. And so that's what I was kind of projecting with the idea of oh, all these you know, years to come, long past one when I'm gone. All these beautiful oak trees with all these graves underneath them in the shade. Because once it's pretty much canopy out, it's going to be totally covered in shade. And everybody's going to love being in shade. We just have to hope that we don't get emerald ash borer or the chestnut blight or the gut shell disease for the, if we plant one kind of tree. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to wonder is a, a way of choosing three or four varieties that have similar size and you know, they go well together. And there might be other reasons for that one would be, you know, copper beach and another oak or, um, in any case, uh, it might not just be size consideration. Uh, I mean, I've seen, well, this isn't the same, but streets where it was the same tree and it was beautiful and then this happened to be Cleveland the whole place. We just had to go ahead. We all went at once. I guess we can do our due diligence and again we have multiple in my opinion we got a long time to decide this but I mean it's just an abstract point. Yeah. I don't have any constructive are you familiar with the oak, white oak light? Just wiped out whole stands of white oak. Well, Not yeah, but you never heard of the emerald ash borer until 10 years ago either. Well, I've heard of the oak borer that's starting to be recorded. Check that out. So, the and I have the right phrase. There is an oak borer. 40 trees, 50, you have to get 70 coming. 70. 70. That's what I was going to say. Over what time period do you see those grow? 300 years. I so, mean, not all of them together, but filling in, like, will they all get filled in and then they'll all go together? They will not be buried, excuse me, they will not be sold one right next to the other. But you can hear and hear. Right. It will be up to, yeah. the, up to the purchaser right. to decide the location they would like and to have. And we might have some fluidity over the, the years where they've been planted. For example, I think what, when somebody looks at a beautiful cemetery, you see a little grove here and a lone tree here and the trees are here. If maybe as we get going, we might decide that we don't want a grid. I mean, I do. Is how much is elasticity in a plant, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, the, the the minute any one of us is no longer with us or no longer <laughs> with us here, I've got the bag sitting on the the entire plan to change. Well, I don't need to be dead. You, you can have a bulldozer come in and put it. Now, wait a minute. Now it's hard to get rid of those oak trees. We're not sending in bulldozers <laughs> over cemetery. Yeah, that's a uh, violation of federal law, probably. Um, OK, so, but the trees, over a long period of time, mm -hmm. they'll be sold and planted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in a long period. You know, but again, for some reason, I just have a feeling, because Lauren likes the idea, I have a feeling it will be relatively popular. Yeah, I think people like trees. I think and we still right. have to talk about, we still have to talk about whether we want to sell these trees to township people 
or anybody who shows up with $3,000. Now, we, we, we were going to talk about it, and I don't know what happened with the discussion of how much we could sell things for. And we certainly still can, but, but having this new website go up long enough, I needed to put some numbers yeah. down. Yeah. And I have just thrown out uh, $3,000 for the, for the tree grade, which includes opening and closing, and planting the tree, and buying the tree. Throw it all in there. It's a, it's a package deal. Because a lot of these family members may or may not be around in a year, yeah. because we have to wait, and, and all the rest of that sort of thing. So if we get it all inclusive, we don't have to worry about that. $3,000 for the tree grade, $750 for the natural burial, the, the five, five foot by 10 foot plot of which there will be roughly a thousand of those in the rest of the cemetery. 750 plus opening and closing is the kind of idea that we're going to have. Um, I have thought about column bearings also. Column bearings, there's, there's five levels. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was going to add to that. You told us about the different. Yeah, there's five levels yeah. of column bearings. Five, uh, five across and five rows up and down. In my mind, I was thinking of the top two rows would be $550 per niche. That would include a one-time opening and closing because it's not that difficult to put the little thing and bring it up. Uh, and you pretty much have to have to do that a second time because you have to take that door, not the door, but you have to take that door and send it away to an engraver and have them engrave your name. And then once it comes back, you're not going to put it there on it. By yourself, and you're going to have us do it. The family, when you put them in the door, yes, and they will have it. Yes, we will have it. We won't. We will have the. We will have. The, we, will have the, we will give them the door. Right. I don't know if we'll charge a deposit for the door. I don't know how we're going to do that yet, because they have to return. They have to return well, that blank door. We have to return that blank door. Okay. Okay. All right. That's how it's going to happen. When would be your projection of uh, when we need these? When are the first sales going to happen? When do we need these details? To well, the column bearings can be sold today. I mean, if, if we do it, the Oak Grove part. Okay, well, let, let, me just, let me just finish on the pricing. The column bearing pricing, the top two rows, which are the premium rows, 550 per niche. The other rows, 450 per niche. Yeah. That's so front and back well, for every. I would be prepared if, if, if we had a written, you know, sheet. I'd be prepared to comment and vote. Okay. Yeah. I think when you wrote it the first time, it was it's kind of out of the blue, and I thought, well, what do you base it on? What the market will bear? What it costs us to do it? What we need to make up with to keep the cemetery going in the future? I didn't. All of those things. I didn't have any handle on yeah, any of those. All those things. Uh, I looked at half a dozen columbarium locations yeah. in different size cemeteries and got different prices. You know, the, the big fancy cemeteries, obviously, those are thousand or two thousand dollars each for them. And in large, grandiose, you know, carved and angels and devils and you know, what? And little we'll type cemeteries like Burton Forest, you know, probably roughly five hundred every day. So it's like what the market was there. Yeah. But it's also what it takes them and people to do. But it's also looking forward to the future of keeping this going. Yep. Okay. So, so is it the I, exact art? So I think yeah. you, you know the most about that. I have all those printed out. I don't have them printed, but I have them in a file. The prices and, and the locations are meant to be put on the new website, but I'll just print that out and bring it in and then go down next time. And I want to make it clear for the public may someday watch this, that a cemetery is a fund unto itself. So we're talking about levies and things and money for fire. That's, they're apples and oranges. Absolutely. Cemetery money cannot be spent for fire. Fire money cannot be spent for fire. But a general fund can be spent for anything. Are these, I'm sorry, are these columnarians that we're talking about, these are the ones that these are potential columnarians at Oak Grove or the ones that you are erecting? There are two of them now okay. that are finished and, and sitting there. Yeah. 
And there's a third one on order, which may show up within the next few weeks. And, and this is in the old part of Glenport. Not not over. Over. Okay. Uh, and I, I ask because I, I thought you had said that there was an ordinance in the calling area? No, yeah, no. Okay. Who will be the first? No. <laughs> Sorry. No one here. Oh, wait. It's be, who's going to be the first yeah. person? Like the <laughs> first baby of the <laughs> year? No one here. Who gets the next mind by having those use as long as you want it? Yeah. Or we could sell name rights to it. It could be the Donald Hollister column area no. number one. My name goes on nothing. My name goes on nothing. So I, yeah, I know what you're saying. Okay, let's move on to uh, fiscal officer. That would be uh, Margaret. Margaret. Um, so I don't have anything to offer. You have a lot to offer here. Yes, but um, not in the realm well, of um, a resolution. We appreciate to this. We adopt an amended appropriation and that kind of stuff. Zone inspector report. Seems like we just saw. It. Yeah, you just did. So, so the the there's not much. Let's go back to this case. There's not any report in terms of uh, permits. I haven't issued any. But uh, the zoning commission met at their usual time, which was about two Tuesdays ago, and they have a resolution. So I'm I'm playing Margaret now. Um, whereas the Miami Township Zoning Commission has proposed revisions to the text of Section 13 by unit development of the Miami Township Zoning Resolution, secure the approval of the same by the Regional Planning and Coordinating Committee of Green County, and have a public hearing with respect thereto at the last, last meeting, all in accord with Section 519.12 of the Miami Lots Code. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Miami Township Zoning Commission recommends the Board of Trustees of Miami Township, Green County, Ohio, approve its revision of the text of Section 13 of the Miami Township Zoning Resolution and directs Miami Township Zoning Inspectors to submit this resolution along with the revised Section 13 text and the action of the Regional Planning and Coordinating Committee of Green County approve its same to the Board of Trustees of Miami Township, forthwith. Signed by Brian Corey, Vice Chairman, Charles Sweeney, Acting Secretary. And I'm going to give this package to Margaret, and, and she can duplicate it if you all want your personal copies. It definitely has Charlie's fingerprints all over. Sure. That's yeah, exactly we, we definitely have a, a slightly different minute taker than we did in the past. Why is he called this Acting Secretary? No, he, this I don't know the title he gave himself. Yeah, it's the kind of notice. That will work its way into the building. Yeah, I thought he was embedded permanent. He, he is, but I mean, he's not, he's he's not appointed not or an elected official. He's hired by the zoning commission slash trustees to do the job. So his tenure is so at will. Maybe he's technically not, he's not an officer of the commission. No. No, I mean, if you want a little bit of history, prior, we've had two regularly employed minute takers for the Zoning Commission in maybe the last 10 years. Before that, the Zoning Commission shared the task of keeping minutes among themselves. And it's, it's, there has been that change in the time that I've been involved. Um, okay. I was happy to be at that meeting. They were so hot, they were gathered up in home. It was sad. Yeah, it was warm. It was, people walked into this room and walked right back out again. But right in the hallway, two, two it was well. make it for the vacation um, But then I, I looked up, well, we, we have to have a hearing. I think I sent you guys an email. And, it, and so I looked up at the code because I'm new and I, yeah. Um, that we only have a certain amount of time before we, yep. but you said relax. I, said, I, I, I took it to me, but when he when he brings this to us, we have thir then 30 days, and the calendar's weird. And I, I know I'm probably among the minority who think we might get somebody who's interested in the hearing who wants to read it and comment. Um, 
Well, so, it has to be advertised. When I, when yeah. I advertised this, I had one person ask me for the, the test. Yeah. I never heard another little P. So do we only have We had nobody in the public yeah. here, excuse me, uh, I'm sorry, except Meryl. Yeah. She, was, she was a member of the public. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this isn't one that's stirred up a lot of interest so far. Well, we can put on the website right away as a draft. So we have 30 days to hold a public hearing. After the public hearing, we have 30 days to act, to make a decision whether we want to uh, approve the recommendation of the, of the commission or not, or modify it. Okay, but ask me how we could modify it. I've never gotten that far. So I even now said that does that public hearing usually happen here? Mm -hmm. It will happen during the same same meeting that we're having right now. But it, what's weird about August is that the last Monday is not a, it's one of those five week things. And so the only meeting in the next 30 days is the 15th. And that's really a short amount of time. Well, and so that we're, maybe, we're nowhere near a, a meeting date yet. Well, no. the public hearing. No, what I mean is the public hearing happened. Yeah, but it has to be advertised. Uh, so we don't have to, that 30 days we shouldn't get anxious about right. it. I don't, I don't, I don't worry, worry too much. much. <laughs> I'm sorry. Say it's, uh, yeah, okay, so we don't have to let If you had somebody that was really trying to contest it, you might want to make sure that every T yeah. was wrong. Or, or, or was that done. they're in a hurry to develop. Yeah. Sure. And or, or whatever it happened to be. Keep on a schedule. So just to be clear, Technically, it's 30 days from when he just presented it to us. Is that when the 30 days is? Oh, I get it. I get it. I don't know. I have, I've never read that part of the thing. This, is in my, in this one isn't my responsibility. What in the requirements of notice and everything would keep us from having the hearing in, in two weeks? Well, because you can't. You have the 10 days notice. Well, we could probably yeah. swing it, but I, I, I just like to just see if there's anybody wants to do it. Maybe just stream it a little bit, just in case, just for. For process sake, you know, I don't know that. Well, that people too can much. read it anytime. They don't have to read it before ten days ahead of them. But they don't even know it exists at this point, also. Yeah. Right. Well, because I can put it on as a draft. Yeah. 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 It might be in the paper. Yeah. Okay. No, I don't think the text. No, not the text. Not the text. Put it in the library. The topic. Mm -hmm. Okay. No. Well, I'm just getting the process clear because. Right. And Margaret, I have that in machine readable format if you would like. Um, okay. so, uh, what, what I can tell you, and I, I assume your public hearings are just the same as uh, zone commission public hearings. When the, the public hearing is announced, if with that announcement you indicate that if anybody wants more information or wants to give testimony, because that's one of the reasons of being able to be noticed in advance. You may not be able to attend the public hearing, and that doesn't mean you don't have the right to, to give testimony. So you can give that in advance to whoever, you know, his name is listed. In, it's, in the that's the same contact you? That's me in, in, in terms of for the zoning commission. I don't, I mean, I, I don't care who does it. I can do it for you. You want to put my name on your public hearing now. Oh, I see what you're saying. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm going from the Zoning Commission now to the public hearing room. For, for right. For the trustees. Okay, that would be, that that would be Margaret. Margaret. Yeah. So, <laughs> are you saying, I'm suggesting that we have a public hearing on this at our next meeting, and you're suggesting, wait, yeah, could we say we will do it our intention currently to have it the first meeting in, August, uh, in September? Sure. Well, it has to, it, obviously it has to go in the paper, which I mean, in theory you can get in the next couple of days. And then have 10 days, and then, and then have a meeting. So you're saying wait until so the See, even if you so got it in this week's now. newspaper, the newspaper doesn't come out until Thursday. And then 10 days, well, the both weekends would make it to the 15th. I guess you might have yeah, 10 days there. Yeah, that's, 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 so, I don't mean to make a federal case out of this. I just thought, because th this might not, well, nobody's moving in with PUD. All I'm saying anything. is let's just settle it. Are we going to have it the next meeting or the meeting after? Sounds like the meeting after. 
sure. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, 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 that would not be more than 30 days from when we can see yeah, it. Yeah, but no, we decided not to do that. <laughs> so we can do too much more. Okay. Yeah, uh, September 30th. In all honesty, in the future, if, if these kinds of timing issues are important, let me know, because I could have gotten this announcement to you sooner. This was just yeah. the convenience of yeah. people involved, you know, putting together the, the resolution yeah. to deliver it at a regularly scheduled meeting. But it could have come to you, it doesn't have to come to you at a meeting. Yeah. I, I right. presume, yeah. although I'm not That's sure how that yeah. works. When I thought the 30 days really mattered, I said the email. Well, I have made the The Zoning Commission has 30 days to deliver it to you, I think. Yeah. So see, we could have push that further yeah, we should. and make your timing work better. Yeah, that's what the email I sent, but yeah, practice makes perfect. And um, there, there's another one coming up, a similar one that people may be paying more attention to, so we should probably. Mm -hmm. One people. One people. Okay. Um, you never know. Anything else, Richard? No. no. Well, oh, I've... I have someone who has, in an email to me, said that they want to have uh, uh, EZA hearing on it on a in, on a, a use in a in a district where the use isn't listed in the list of things you can do in the district for the BJ has to determine if that's appropriate. Um, but when I said, "Oh, we can have that hearing." I talk to BDA members, you know, in, in three weeks or whatever. If you come in and, and fill out the paperwork today, well, it didn't happen. So I don't, I don't know where that stands. But there's a potential BDA here. That's all I can say. It's not, not terribly controversial. Uh, I don't, I hope not. So, well, I'm sure that members will look forward to getting together again. All right. Anything else? Zoning laws. Zoning laws. Any new business this evening? Lens to move on. Um, old business, we have uh, a couple of things I know that Marilyn's been sitting on, but she's. What's that? That old business that you've been hatching? That old business you've been hatching, the uh, uh, work that you're doing on the website. Let's just continue. Okay. I find myself competing with you for our website no. person's no. attention, but that's that's fine. The, the, the person's out. attention that you're competing for has asked that I give you a message that she would like you to get hold of her, uh, and she would like to schedule a meeting with you in person. Yeah. I, since she gave me that message, I would go through the phone. Friday. I'm sorry, is this new business or old business? Um, this is old business. It's, yeah, okay. Business. Okay. Communication. Yeah. Message received. Okay. Um, and I, I didn't I didn't check every term, but your your draft thing, it, it says four years, they're five year terms. Yeah, yeah, I saw that today. Yeah. Okay. So it can be sometimes confusing when you look at the term because they start on January of one year and end on December. So the, the two dates are four years apart. The right. term yeah. is five years. They're, they're five people, five years, yeah. five rotate. I don't know if I put that. Township on it includes the land that comes to land plus the village, which you 
was EC and um, Agraria, and I think I'm forgetting one. Um, and the village, besides the plan that they produced, the village granted them $25,000 for a staff person. And they, and they turned and um, said that they got funding from some of the other stakeholders if that's possible. And, um, and that got me to thinking, and I'm not even proposing that unless they'd like to um, actually make a, a presentation to this um, meeting, to, to this board um, sometime in the future. But it got me thinking about the ARPA funds. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I know we, it's, it's just kind of been sitting there and nobody's really wanted to touch it with the, with the comfort of knowing it's there. And we, we received $130,000. Um, for those of you who don't know, it was the uh, big Joe Biden, uh, what they, they call recovery. Yeah, it's supposed to be on July 15th. I'm sorry. Okay, no. Um, it's a stimulus recovery act from COVID or whatever. It started out at, um, very ambitious, you know, invest in your community's future. Our, the uh, counties investing it in broadband and different cities investing in different ways. And it kind of, over time, they said, well, you, you can even use it for funding if you can prove that you lost money during the COVID. And then it morphed into, you can, if you're under a million dollars, you can use it for funding, you don't even have to justify it. Under 10 million. You don't have to justify it. So it's kind of, you know, morphed from a, a more idealistic thing to, um, let's get the bills paid thing kind of among townships. Um, and, and Chris, I know you believe that we really need it for the fire budget, and I agree with you. And its predecessor, the um, Trump's recovery bill, which was called CARES Act, we did kind of a 70-30, 70, 70 short the fire department and 30 um, granted to different business and rents and I don't, don't even know what else. Forgivable loans. Forgivable loans and things. And just just think about it, that I would like to propose it, that we think about doing the same thing 730 for that. Um, that would give almost hundred thousand dollars into the um, fire fund and um, also carry out some of the spirit of what it's in the and that last thirty thousand is not going to solve our fire, our fire fund problems anyway. So I think that's a, a, a great idea, and Don, I want you to weigh in this as soon as I close my mouth because I just had this idea that I would one hundred percent back that idea on November. Seven, eight. <laughs> <laughs> November 8th is the election. Okay, on November 9th, <laughs> I would have that, or the first meeting after the 9th, I would, I would be more than open to discussing. We need to see how the little folks goes. Did you say 70% to the fire department? Yeah. And you did that with Chris the care saying, I know what I did, but, it, but is that what you were saying? Yeah. I wasn't clear on where the 70% There's, there's well no amount of justifying we can say how much the fire department needs. You can leave the whole thing. Probably, but on the other talking hand. about the capital cost of the new fire truck. It wouldn't pay for a tenth of, it might pay a tenth of. For the sake of the minutes, how does that tie into the Climate Action Committee? Um, you said that they, 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 they appointed, you know, or committed 25,000 for a staff person. Of the bill, yes. It, it, for the Climate Action Committee. Um, and then you moved into what you the that part. That, that's what gave me the idea. And, and I'm actually surprised that this Kramer didn't ask us for money today. I was bracing myself, but there are there are people that have. And um, it just got me to thinking if there are these small little things like the, the cli climate action people, if, if they can justify, if, it, if we could get them, you guys interested in a, a project. I would, that. I would like to hear 
from them. A project that would book, that would benefit us physically as a township that's aligned with their goals. Something that, that we would be interested in. That's very convoluted. Um, I'm not. Does it have to be part of this? You, you brought it. You brought it up as, as a topic to stimulate thoughts. Stimulate thoughts. Doesn't have scratch, to you can stretch the, the, the climate action. By the way, I want I want to give you the initial C A S P cast. So I don't have to say climate action sustainability project, and that's how it's becoming known in the village as well. Cast. So you could add that acronym to your own committee part. Can I throw something in to end the meeting? There it's were, going to end the meeting. Yes. Yeah, that, that's uh, okay. there were, There's more than one person in this room that canoed on the Little Miami in in support of taking care of the Little Miami, mm -hmm. and and um, I was one of those people, and I don't Friday. think exactly has anything to do with zoning, but but it could because zoning sometimes does do overlay zoning to protect well fields or maybe they do rivers. Uh, but more importantly, there was discussion, and it appears the biggest threat right now to the Little Miami River is development. Because it's the runoff from the developments that is destroying the Little Miami River. We don't have set our standard mode of detention, retention areas, doesn't, doesn't do the job. Now that's not exactly township business, but it's something to think about because you know, uh, our our township, you know, has a little my can remember in it from one end to the other, and it's and it's um, With Miami yes. Township, uh, uh, Little Miami River. <laughs> Funny thing, huh? it, Richard, you said at the end of the zoning commission meeting that the next section you're going to be reviewing for the the floodplain regulations. Yeah. Is it strictly floodplain flood regulations or is it waterways? No, that is it's floodplain. Well, well, yeah. We're trying to end the meeting. I don't want to get into another topic. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I, I thought it was just important to mention that that meeting took place and it's more than, oh, we're all happy because we can go canoeing on the Little Miami River. There's some, still some serious issues about taking care of that water. Although its water quality has been improving. But with Margaret, myself, and Richard, and who, who came with that? Dan? Oh, the person I could do. <laughs> but I don't remember. It was one. not an official. There was another, yeah, he, he was a, he was a citizen. There was a, get, a good turnout. It was not last Friday, it was a week before last Friday. Yeah. It was a great day. It was perfect weather. Oh, yeah, we, we, we couldn't just, have had a nicer day. So yeah. it was the county district. parks district, Little Miami partners, and the Little Miami Concerns. Very good. Uh, any further business this evening? I entertain a motion to adjourn. I so move. We are. Yeah, second. Move the second and adjourn by acclamation. Thank you all for coming this evening.